Hello everyone, my name is Gary Miklas, and I've been playing drums for over 50 years. I recently retired and I built the electronic kit you see here from a set of Gretsch drums and various shells I purchased used. And I'll be playing almost every day. It was a fun project and I'm very happy with the result. Prior to this kit, I played a role in TD-10. But when I started playing the new kit, I uncovered a dilemma, how to completely eliminate the vibration that was penetrating the floor. You see, I live in a condo building and my floor is made of 10 inch thick concrete. And my neighbors below, rightfully so, were hearing the vibration very loudly as I just had the kit directly on the floor using only a carpet, which did very little to cut the vibration. So I built a solution. I'm going to walk you through what I built to remove that vibration completely, which has since been confirmed by my neighbors below. So like many of you, I went out on YouTube and the internet searching for a solution. And in that process, I came across many designs for tennis ball risers and the like, which most people say knocks the sound down about 50 to 60 percent. I like the idea, but I needed the noise to be completely gone. You see that people below live there full time and they don't deserve to listen to this noise a few hours every day. So I went on a mission to educate myself on the options. I did research on noise attenuation, vibration attenuation, etc. And I found a combination of items that when stacked have completely removed the vibration. And this has been confirmed by my neighbors below. So how did I do this? Let me walk you through the steps I took and the products I purchased. As I go through this, you'll obviously note that this solution is a bit expensive. Since it was an investment in my retirement, I was willing to pay what it took to get it right. Of course, I realize not everyone can afford to replicate this solution. So after this presentation, I'll show you what it cost me to build and what a fair alternative DIY solution might cost. Okay, so let's get to the build. First step, was to put down some noise cancelling underlayment beneath the carpet which I had previously purchased. Of course any carpet will do, just make sure you pick one as thick as possible because every bit helps. Note that I put two layers of the underlay underlayment beneath the carpet, not just one. Next I built the riser and found it necessary to add some extra rubber feet <clears throat> along the back and front edges just to make it more stable and better able to carry weight. Note the blue, light blue dots uh, in the picture. That's where I placed the extra rubber feet. And these are the rubber feet that I purchased. These feet are very beefy and they do an excellent job of absorbing the vibration. The riser came with a carpeted cover. <clears throat> and on top of that cover, I placed the noise grabber rubber sheet and screwed it down to the riser once it was assembled and in place. Please make sure that when you place your riser in its final location, it's not against the wall, uh, as obviously the vibration will travel into the wall, and we don't want that. After that noise grabber sheet, I placed another carpet on top, and underneath the feet of the bass drum, hi-hat, and snare, I placed some rubber furniture pads, just a little extra insurance. But notice I did not need to place any additional rubber underneath the bass drum pedal as one might expect. Actually, I had originally placed a piece of noise grabber underneath, but it made the pedal a little less stable, so I took it away. So here's a little bit about the bass drum. As most of you know, the bass drum can be extremely loud relative to your typical e-drum bass pad. So after building this one with the electronics inside, I did as much as possible um, to knock down the noise inside the drum. I lined it with foam padding that you see here. And I stuffed a pillow inside as well. And I put padding on the inside and outside of the bass drum heads. And I used the Drum Tech Real Fuel Mesh Heads, which work extremely well and they're pretty quiet. After these modifications, I did a DB test um, and I noticed that uh, I had knocked down the DBs from about 68 DB to 51 um, with a peak when I really slammed the pedal hard 
uh, about 85 dB. And when I did that, once I had insulated it, it was about 68 dB. <clears throat> I need to try to keep the level of noise down in the room as well, and I'm still working on that. So that effort to quiet the bass drum is worth it. Just thought I'd share that along with what I did for the vibration in the floor. So in summary, here's the cost breakdown. To the right of what I did, I've estimated the cost to replicate this using a DYI drum riser and less expensive but highly efficient underlayment. Big ticket items, as you can see, were the drum riser, which I bought prefabricated in the noise grabber rubber sheet. So I've laid out what it would cost using less expensive materials and to build the riser from scratch. There are plenty of good videos on YouTube that show how to build a riser using MDF board. So check those out if you want to take the DYI route. You could use this underlayment under the carpet, just double it up like I did the one I used. And on top of the riser, in place of the underlayment I used uh, on top of the carpet, that would save a substantial amount of money. Frankly, the only reason I didn't go 100% DYI was time. I needed to get this done, and I had other things that were more important occupying the majority of my time. And also, the fact that I did not have the space or the tools, saws and the like, necessary to build a platform from scratch. <clears throat> of course, I have to add a disclaimer here. Obviously, there's no way I can guarantee this will work in every situation, but it certainly did for me. And if nothing else, I hope you find the video informative and got some ideas on how you can solve your particular dilemma. So here again, you see the final product from various angles. My dream electronic drum kit. Now I can enjoy playing without worrying about the neighbors below. In case you're curious, um, I use a Roland TD-10 module and an eDrumming box as MIDI devices running into Easy Drummer 2, and I use Reaper as my recording software. If you want to hear the end product, please visit my YouTube page and check out a couple of videos. And if you're interested um, in this part of the creation, the kit, feel free to contact me to discuss. Happy to share my experience. My email is marleyfla18 at gmail.com. That's capital M-A-R-L-E-Y-F-L-A-1-8. The number is 18 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching my video.